You're unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Welcome back to another unbelievable episode of Unbelievable Physics. Today we're going to take a look at our kinematics equations, otherwise known as our five friends. Now, what kinds of problems would be considered kinematics problems? Well, a few examples would be cars that have to slam on their brakes to avoid a head-on collision, cars that want to speed up because they like to race really fast, objects that are falling, objects that are rolling down hills, people that are running, planes that are taking off, uh, the list goes on and on and on. But in short, anytime we have a problem where an object has constant acceleration, that is considered a kinematics problem. Now before I introduce you to the five friends, there's five pieces of information that you need to know to be able to solve our kinematics equations. First, we need to know our starting velocity, or v naught. This little word right here, it is pronounced v naught. It's a little zero next to it. All it means is at time zero, what is the velocity? Or in other words, our starting velocity. We also need to know our ending velocity, and we just call that v. So v naught is the starting velocity, and v is the ending velocity. We also need to know our acceleration, our displacement, or the distance. Uh, for the case of these problems, the objects are always going to be traveling in a straight line. So the displacement and distance are going to be equal. So we'll actually use those words interchangeably. And the last thing that we need to be able to know is our time. Now, the truth is, we don't actually need to know all five of these to be able to solve a kinematics problem. We actually only need to know three of the five to be able to solve with the kinematics problems. And the reason for that is because of our five friends and the way that they're set up. Right here on the left hand side, these are our new friends, our five friends. On the right hand side, this tells you the situation in which you can use each of those friends. An easy way to think of this is in real life, you may have a friend that's really funny, so you go to them when you want to laugh. Or you'll have a friend who's a really good cook, You'll go to them when you want some really good food. Well, the same thing with our kinematics problems. If I don't have acceleration, meaning out of all these five items here, if I don't know A, then I'm going to come to this friend to be able to solve for my don't need A problems. Likewise, if I have a problem where I don't know the time, I'll actually look over here and find, oh, this friend is really good when we don't need T it can solve my problem when I don't have time. So these are why it's called your five friends, because just like in real life, they're there for you when you need them. They're there to, to help solve all of your problems. And each friend has its own little specialty, its own unique personality that'll help you get through your tough times. I think uh, the easiest way to use them is to break it down into three simple steps. The first step is to start by writing down every piece of information that you know. The way that I like to do that is to actually write it in a vertical column where I start off with the five, v naught v a d t, which is our starting velocity, ending velocity, acceleration, distance or displacement or time, like we talked about before. The next thing that we'll do is once we've written down what we know and realized what we don't know, we'll figure out which equation to use and isolate the needed variable. Now there's usually one piece of information that we don't have. So we'll use that corresponding equation, like I mentioned before. And then last, we just plug in your known values into the equation that you've chosen and solve. Now the easiest way to probably learn this is to see a couple of examples. So let's run through a couple really quickly so you can see the way that I would solve these so that you can solve your own problems. Our first example is us driving down the highway at 30 meters per second when suddenly a deer jumps out into the road. We slam on the brakes and we come to a stop in three seconds. Well, what's the distance that we travel while we're slowing down? Well, remember the first step is to write down everything that we know. So V naught V A D T. We plug these in. We have our starting velocity is 30 meters per second. We know that because at the beginning of the problem, we're traveling at 30 meters per second. 
we know that our ending velocity is going to be zero because we slam on the brakes and we come to a stop. And a stop means we're not moving, meaning zero velocity. The last piece of information we know is that it takes us three seconds to stop, so we plug that in down here, three seconds to stop. The last thing I like to do is write down a question mark for the thing that we're trying to solve. It says, well, what's the distance or the displacement that we're traveling while slowing down? So I write that with a little question mark. A is the only thing that's left over that doesn't have anything written down. So we actually uh, can get rid of it because remember, we only need to know three of the five pieces of information or sometimes I'll say the four because we include our little question mark that we need to have that written down. So we can actually cross off A since we don't need it. So now when we're choosing the right equation, we look here and say, I don't have A. So I'm going to use my don't need a equation to be able to solve it. Now that I've chosen the correct equation, I just need to plug in all of my known values into the equation and solve. Well, to do that, I write down the equation first in its entirety, and then I'll isolate the variable that I'm trying to find. In this case, I'm trying to find D and D is already isolated. So I don't need to isolate the variables for this one because the equation is already set up the right way. So plugging in all of my known values, my starting velocity up here is 30 meters per second. So I plug that in for my V naught. My ending velocity is zero meters per second. So we plug that in for V. The time it takes to stop is three seconds. So I'll plug that in there. Solving this just a little bit more and simplifying. Uh, the 30 plus 0 is just 30. And then 1 half times 30 gives me 15. Now notice that I have 15 meters per second times 3 seconds. Well, m over s times s, the seconds will actually cancel out and we don't, they cancel. They no longer exist because uh, meters divided by seconds times seconds cancel out. So we have 15 meters times 3 gives us 45 meters. And that's the total distance that we it takes for us to stop if traveling at a road at 30 meters per second and it takes three seconds to stop. Hopefully that deer was more than 45 meters away, otherwise we hit the deer before we come to a complete stop. In our second example, uh, let's just say that a rocket that's launched into space can accelerate at 20 meters per second squared. Now, I know that rockets can accelerate much more than that, but for this uh, example, let's just say it's 20. And I want to know how far will it travel in the first 10 seconds of the launch, assuming it has a constant acceleration of 20 meters per second. Well, step one, we write down everything that we know. So V naught V ADT. Our starting velocity is going to be zero since a rocket on Earth is not moving before we launch it. Our acceleration, as mentioned above, is 20 meters per second squared. And then it takes 10 seconds for, or, or we want to know how far it's going to travel in the first 10 seconds. So we write down the 10 seconds. Now we choose the right equation and isolate the correct variables. Well, V was the only thing that was left over that we don't have. So we can cross that off and say that we don't need V, which means this equation right here. Since we don't have V and we don't need V, we, we uh, use this equation. So we write down this equation and then we, last step, we plug in all of our known values. So zero times T, so zero times 10 meters per second, plus one half times our acceleration, which is 20 meters per second squared, times our T squared. And the time was 10 seconds, so we square that. Well, zero times 10 is just zero. So we get D is equal to zero plus all the rest of everything else. Well, then if we simplify this, one half times 20 meters per second squared gives us 10 meters per second squared times, and then 10 squared is 100 seconds squared. So we have 10 meters per second squared times 10 seconds squared. And once again, this second squared and that second squared cancel leaving us with just the 1,000 meters. So a rocket that can accelerate at 20 meters per second squared will travel 1,000 meters in the first 10 seconds of its launch, which is pretty far. Let's try an example, or have you try an example all by yourself. 
and uh, I'll show you the answers at the end. Uh, Sean Langdon, just the other day, uh, he's a pro NHRA top fuel drag racer. He actually just finished a race and actually won the competition by finishing his race in 3.721 seconds. Now they're racing an eighth of a mile, which is about 200 meters. So let me ask you these two questions. What was his top speed and what was his average acceleration? And when I say top speed, I really mean his final velocity. To solve this is actually two problems in one. Just break it down, solve for one object first, or his, his top velocity, his ending velocity, and then go back, look at what you know again, and then solve for his average acceleration. I'll give you five seconds to solve it on your own, which I know you'll need more than five seconds, so pause the video. Solve the problem, and then uh, in five seconds, I'll show you the answers. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one, and the answers that his average acceleration is about 29 meters per second squared. That's almost three G's about. And his final velocity, if we're assuming it's a constant acceleration, the final velocity is 107.5 meters per second. That's almost 240 miles per hour. Now, for any of you guys that were actually watching the race, you'll realize our calculated value, this 240 miles per hour, is different than his actual value, which was 330-something miles per hour. And the reason for that is we're assuming it's a constant acceleration, when in fact these top fuel racers are not constant acceleration. But to simplify things, we like to assume that sometimes, and, and this is what we would get if they did accelerate at a constant rate. Anyway, thanks for joining me on Unbelievable Physics. I hope you have a great rest of the day.